Hey everybody, I'm Steve Slater. I'm here at Slater's Hardware in our straw man department. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a Slater Atlas stone using our Slater Atlas stone molds. So the main ingredients you'll need to make an Atlas stone will be a Slater stone mold, concrete, and you'll need water. Other than that, other things that are gonna help would be Gorilla Tape, a method of mixing your concrete. I like the concrete mixing bag, uh, a lubricant, a respirator, fibers, and rubber gloves. Before we start, we're gonna spray the inside of the stone mold, and that'll help the stone release once we're done. And you line up the seams like so, just like that. And then you look inside to make sure there are no gaps in the seam. Everything looks good. One nice thing about our molds is that you'll have very little gap in between the two hemispheres. So it's not gonna leak concrete. And then what you wanna do is tape the two molds together. We like Gorilla Tape because it's waterproof and it doesn't leave much residue on the mold. So you just take a strip and you go like that and just tape the two hemispheres together. You want to put on around eight pieces of tape. Just go through and make sure the tape's on there really well. Once again, look in the center to make sure, or inside to make sure they're, the parting seam looks good. And yeah, everything looks solid. So next step you'll want to take would be to nest this into something. You can nest it into a tire if you want. You can nest it into a five gallon bucket. I prefer five gallon buckets. One good thing about the mixing bags is that you, you don't need a scoop. You, all you have to do is dump the concrete right into the mold. Okay, so you wanna open the bag of concrete and then basically what you do is just kinda of envelope the concrete mixing bag over top. Just like so. But before you mess with the concrete, you wanna make sure you don't breathe the dust. So we always make sure we use a respirator. So you just flip it over like that. And you pull out the bag of concrete. Now, of course, there's other methods of mixing concrete. You can use a wheelbarrow and uh, you know mix it in a wheelbarrow. You can get a concrete mixer if you want. Anything will work just as long as you have a good, even blend, blended mix. I like this because it's reusable and you won't need a scoop. So for about 80 pounds of concrete, most bags come in 80 pound bags of the Quick Crete 5000 anyway. We use about a gallon and a quarter of water. So you dump the dry mix in, then you dump the water in, and you're gonna take the bag, you're gonna twist it, and it comes with a Velcro strap. Then you just grab one side of the bag, and then grab the corner. and you're gonna mix it like that, then you're gonna grab the other corner. Okay, now that I've mixed the concrete, what I like to do is I like to put in my fibers. I like to do that after I mix the concrete. So I'm dumping about a half a bag per 80 pound of mix. The fibers will help reinforce the concrete, so it's gonna make it more durable. You want your Atlas stones to last, and this is gonna help. The reason why I dump the fibers in after I mix up the concrete and remix it is because it's just gonna be a better mix. And I wanna emphasize, if you wanna make a good stone, you wanna make sure that you have a nice, smooth, blended mix. And that's just gonna help. So you can go through here and you can feel, you can feel any clumps that are in the bag and just kind of break them up. Okay, that feels pretty good. So before you mess with wet concrete, throw some rubber gloves on just to keep yourselves from getting any sort of concrete burn. You don't wanna keep concrete on your skin for long. So just as a safety precaution, we use rubber gloves. At this point, the best method of lifting the bag, hold on to a seam like this and right here and grab the bottom and pop it up on your hip. And then from there, you pour in the mold. Then what you do from there is just repeat the process and fill the mold all the way up. So once you get near the top, just kind of shake it, pat the sides, try to get the air bubbles to come to the top. 
Then what you'll do is you'll take the bucket, grab it, and turn it back and forth several times. When you do that, it's gonna help swish the concrete around on the inside, and it's gonna kinda of like trowel it. It's gonna trowel it on the inside. So it's gonna make it a lot more smoother on the inside, and that's what you want with an Atlas stone. You don't want an Atlas stone that has a lot of pits on it and stuff like that. It's gonna hurt when you lift. So you want it to be as smooth as possible. So that's one of the techniques that I do to make it smooth. After I do that, then I go ahead and top it off. And there it comes out. So now the, that mix is pushing that water out. And then what you do is just pat the sides again. That's gonna help it be a smoother stone. So once we're done, and you have concrete on the outside of the mold, I think it's a good idea just to clean it off. Um, you wanna keep your molds pretty clean so the duct tape will stick or the Gorilla tape will stick the next time. So you can just take a shop towel or a rag or what have you and then just clean it off like this. We've wrapped up this stone right here and we're gonna let it sit in there for about three days before we break it from the mold. But what we have here is we have another stone that's been sitting in the mold and we're ready to take it out. So I'll show you how to do that. What you'll need to take it out of the mold is that you'll need a hammer and you'll need a tap stick, which we include. Just like so. And then just take the duct tape off. Once the duct tape's off, you then wanna place the tap stick against this portion of the mold right here. And you'll see on the tap stick it's cut, so that'll naturally just go against the retaining ring. Then what I like to do is I like to get something to brace the bottom underside portion of the mold so it doesn't roll when I tap the top portion of the mold off. So once again, I put the tap stick right here. You'll tap the top portion of the stone off. Then you'll roll it around, brace the stone again, and tap the top portion of the stone off, just like so. On every one of our stones, you'll see it says Slater Stones, and it'll have the inches right there marked so you know what size it is. Then another thing you'll notice is that we have a very little seam line. That's for comfort. I don't want anybody's forearms rubbing against this and causing discomfort. But you will see that there may be a little edge, like so, that just you need to pop off just like that. So this is the top portion of the stone, and then this will be the bottom portion of the stone. This is a natural occurrence here. It's gonna be a little bit more rough here, which I kind of like, because it's normally not too rough. It's almost like knurling on a barbell. So it's appropriate for stones to be rough on that side. And generally, that's the side you're lifting from because it's on the flat spot. If you do wanna sand this down, you can go ahead and sand it down. And sometimes I'll use hydraulic cement to patch that. You know, if it's very rough, I'll use hydraulic cement to patch that and uh, then I'll go down and go through and sand it down. That's how you make a Slater stone using a Slater stone mold.